right? So the uh, the book map live uh, order flow advanced analysis risk disclaimer. Trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. And uh, uh, yep, bookmap.com, you guys are members already. So you get access to those free resources and just reach out to us with any uh, problems, questions, uh, comments, etc. cetera, at uh, support at bookmap.com. Okay. And if you don't know about our YouTube and Twitter page, you can follow us here on Twitter uh, and then our YouTube page. Uh, just go to the home here. And uh, oh, we are here. OK. Um, and uh, uh, you can see all the different playlists that we have here. So uh, if you're new and in trial, this is what I recommend. First, watch the features and components videos. Just know you got to know what you're looking at here in Bookmap and how to use it. Uh, and that's actually what the first webinar is for. And then secondly, just open up a few of these and watch these. Um, these uh, order flow video snippets, try to understand the phenomena that is there. Uh, and then start to look at it uh, in, um, uh, in, in the live markets and in replay mode. Okay. So uh, uh, I did have a, a question uh, for, uh, let's see trader who is asking about the replay mode uh, let's see yeah I don't see him in here okay but anyway I, I want to uh, I do want to show it um, because uh, it's under the features uh, and components uh, so let me let me show that in a minute but uh, and then there's this book map education course okay so this is about just understanding the markets uh, and uh, and we're using Bookmap, of course, but uh, it's about understanding these markets uh, and then how Bookmap is showing these markets, okay? Because it's very very visual, uh, and um, I think this will be very helpful for you. Uh, and then start to combine it with maybe some of these order flow video snippets. Okay, all the recordings are here, as you can see, and uh, here's a professional trader who's very good, uh, and you can watch uh, his videos uh, as well. Uh, webinars we've uh, uh, done with him All right okay uh, the features and components the um, uh, replay mode okay so here's the replay data here and then uh, replay uh, data mode practical uses watch these two okay so this is basically how I learned bookmap was to record my live data in bookmap and then replay it again and again okay so I would start to understand the areas, and then in replay mode, I would play it over and over, uh, and I could see many instances uh, unfold uh, and uh, and become an expert at at that one instance uh, or that one phenomena, uh, and um, and then go go on to the next. Okay, like understand absorption, uh, understand exhaustion, uh, understand that flip of the book, uh, uh, some of these other uh, other other uh, uh, subjects. Uh, let's see, Michael. Yeah, the, the advanced um, uh, webinars are recorded. Uh, you'll see the last few are on the, on the website there. Okay. Uh, the uh, uh, 2476 flip of the book should be illegal. Um, Yeah, uh, I don't really, I don't really see anything up here at 2476. Um, but uh, uh, the flip I, I'm I'm kind of alluding to is down here uh, that that we can see, and it's not not the, I mean it's, it's definitely a flip, um, but there's a, you know, not the cleanest uh, example uh, in the world here. So I, I really like to see like heavy high liquidity here. And then they were on the offer, and now they're on the bid, right? And it basically, you know, kind of uh, locks uh, uh, price, or at least, the, you know, the sellers will have to take on high liquidity. Uh, so a lot of times price will accept in this new range. And that's the whole idea of that flip of the book, all right? So that auction has shifted. It has changed. And uh, now... Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that the sellers can't trade through that area. It just means that there's a lot of liquidity. They, there's a lot of traders there. So uh, 
uh, they're, they're willing to buy at that level. That's exactly what it means. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Peter. Um, give the yes in front of you. Can you go through the volume on the larger uh, down move at 1051? Sure. All right. So, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, just a, a real uh, big sweep here. Now, I, you know, I, I don't know. What, there might have been something that uh, some fundamental news uh, in the marketplace uh, that uh, uh, allowed for this. Um, you know, a lot of times what you'll see uh, is um, out of the blue. And it happens all the time, and this is one of the risks, and is especially for the market-making algos, uh, one of the risks that is inherent in the marketplace, and that is the, the sweeping activity here, like this. Okay, uh, some maybe some large player comes in, uh, and then just very aggressively just starts taking every single level here. Okay, uh, and, and maybe a, a host of them start to join in, and uh, they're they're. Um, uh, you know, triggering stops uh, down in some of these areas, uh, and um, uh, they want they want uh, they're looking for uh, uh, a better price. Okay, uh, a lot of times you'll see that, um, and um, uh, this um, uh, you know what what exactly unfolded here. Well, in terms of liquidity, uh, we can look right at it, and we can see that um, uh, you know I don't see anything really nefarious here at all. Uh, you know, I'm not, I mean, I see them getting aggressive here, uh, in the book, but this is, this is no big deal. Uh, you know, it's a few ticks away and it's just one price level, uh, a, a little bit, uh, lower here, a couple ticks lower. I mean, look at these striations as well. These are larger players, every other tick, uh, providing liquidity at some of these areas. Um, and, um, uh, we can also, um, uh, well, we, we can just look at it here and we can see what really unfolded and what drove price lower here was very aggressive market sells, okay? Just sweeping through uh, areas and uh, taking all of that liquidity and going to the next level, okay? Taking all of that liquidity, going to the next level and, and so on. Now here it kind of dried up, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that, that first um, tranche of, uh, of selling, uh, it kind of reignited over here, and you see buyers starting to step in now here too, okay? So, um, you know, they're starting to uh, battle uh, here at uh, around this, between 72 and 73, okay? Uh, and then we get uh, one more, one more sweep down below here, okay? Now you start to see something different though, okay? And we'll look at them, look at them starting to, um, uh, uh, you know, jump into the uh, the book here. Right uh, between uh, the 71 and 71 and a half. Okay. Now, and why do I think that this was some sort of, um, uh, you know, maybe geopolitical event or something? And the reason being is um, we start to look how you know they're they're pulling liquidity here. Okay. And they're still not even adding back in until later here. Okay. So you know uh, something happened here. Uh, so I, I don't know what it, what it was. I, I wasn't following it. In, anyone have any any insight to that? Um, okay. Well, anyway, I mean, you can see that um, uh, the, uh, uh, the the algos though, or or you know, look at them turn off. Okay. Uh, they they don't want to be a part of the risk. Okay. And what when this happens, and this is what happened, like in the flash crash. Uh, when this happens, prices, you know, it's, it's even easier, uh, for the aggressor, uh, to, to have, have price kick lower. Okay. But then down here, and this is something we covered in the, uh, in, in the first, uh, webinar we got, we went over a little bit of advanced, uh, uh, data, um, is, uh, the, uh, this area here is where we broke from. Okay. Uh, and, um, and, and this was the area of interest here at, uh, at 71, 71 and a quarter. Okay. We actually see it, a, a microcosm of it, uh, occur down here, uh, as well. But, uh, then, uh, but this one is, uh, really where I, I would be interested. Okay. And that's exactly where we came back down into, uh, this area. And so far we have accepted. Okay. And uh, look at the aggressive selling. All of this aggressive selling 
and look at them now here uh, in some of these areas. Um, uh, look at the low that's right here, okay? Here, I mean, there's some selling right one tick above it, okay? But then look at look at this area here as well. They're not the sellers are gone, right? And then we get one more push, and then uh, and they're still not not they don't want to take it further, right? So um, uh, and uh, you know this is the market is exhausting out here in terms of the selling, okay? So um, uh, we rotate back into some of the volume. Uh, that traded previously. Uh, market needs to trade. Market needs uh, needs traders. It needs liquidity. Okay, transaction takes place between the aggressor and um, uh, the uh, the liquidity provider. Okay, the aggressor uh, consumes the liquidity. All right. Okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, in in terms of this big move down, I mean, uh, I don't I don't see anything that, um, like I said, it's uh, disruptive or nefarious. Uh, I mean, I do see that pulling of liquidity, uh, and um, uh, it, uh, that allows for price to come back down. Look how this guy here. This is just it's just fascinating stuff to see. This guy stayed in the book. Okay, he pulled at the last minute here. But then, uh, and then one tick lower, I don't know, might be the same player, uh, but they're starting to get interested, right? Everyone else pulled except for uh, some of these players here. And then they're jumping back in here uh, in this area, okay? Where we don't see really, it's all dark uh, in, in some of this area, right? And then uh, they're still a little bit lower. So in, in reading this context, this is, this is something that we've been going over again and again, and this is, this is critical. Uh, to understand in terms of the auction uh, and the liquidity is to understand the context of that auction, okay? These guys are jumping in at this area here. This guy stayed in, okay? Uh, and uh, But they're pulling as soon as price comes up one tick away. They start pulling uh, in these areas, as you can see, okay? So, um, uh, and you can notice the reflection on the other side. So this is some, you know, algo working price on one side and the other. Uh, uh, they're they're pulling uh, from some areas. They're adding in at other areas here, uh, and uh, and we we you know are are, are pretty sure that uh, they they got to be some of the uh, the same players here, uh, because uh, as soon as one pulls, it adds to the other area here. So they pull from here and add a couple ticks above. Okay, can everyone see that? As soon as they pull from here and add a couple ticks below, as well. Okay, look at how it's like a it's like a it's like teeth uh, that that match up uh, to this area up here. So very very high probability it's got to be the same player. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're reading that context. Okay, and we have more information at this at this level. Okay, this is where we, we broke from, and um, uh, we have maybe a, a trend reversal here. I mean, we certainly do on the on this trend downtrend is over here, uh, and uh, and this is where that that shifted. Okay, uh, and um, uh, and so are the buyers going to support here at this area? Is the question, and they start to as price is coming down. Okay, they start to get interested. Right. So that's the context we're putting together here. Okay, we're reading those uh, those players here. Okay, uh, reading how they're starting to come back into the book. They pull though; they're not. You know, this isn't so much uh, commitment here uh, at this area, and they they're still they're still down here at 71 though. Okay, uh, and um, and then we just kind of go sideways for a bit, uh, and uh, but the but the sellers uh, the selling stops. Uh, you know, we, we can see at this at this level here at 71 and a quarter, there's very few contracts. 36 contracts have traded compared to 2,000, almost 2,100, one tick above. Okay. Okay, and we get one more retest here, and we see 49 contracts altogether traded here. All right, that 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 compared to you know 1,200 contracts of liquidity, that's not going to put even a, a dent into it. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, 
putting that context together, we have our level, our higher time frame level. We have an understanding of what occurred here. And we're starting to understand the auction back to this level. All right. So um, now uh, we see that um, uh, what, what else unfolds here that gives us insight? Okay. There's a, uh, it's actually, eh, it's uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, you can see that they start to come back in here at 72 now, okay, and showing some interest here. Uh, and that's bullish. Uh, and then what about these guys here? Well, look how they pulled, okay? Nothing traded here. I mean, they, they pull at the last, very last second uh, when price is coming up and tests into this. So the best offer is now at 73, but nothing trades, okay? And um, so uh, we rotate, uh, uh, you know, a, a tick lower and trade there, okay? And then, uh, you know, you can see it bid down here, nothing trades, and it, it can, kind of rotates back and forth here. Okay. So um, uh, anyway, uh, the uh, the context uh, of this high liquidity here is they certainly don't want to trade, right? And putting that together with higher time frame, understanding this auction over here, understanding the support at the they're starting to show a little bit lower, uh, and uh, showing the context of that liquidity coming into the book. Okay, and then showing exhaustion at some of these areas here. Okay, so uh, uh, you know that uh, is is giving us some insight. Okay, this area here is where you, you get even a little bit more insight. Okay, it's not it's not the greatest, but uh, they're bidding up at higher areas, and they're pulling here uh, that high liquidity. Okay, uh, and um, if uh, one of the things that um, uh, you're looking for uh, in in your uh, in your trading is a pullback to uh, these sharp breaks. Well, you know this is you you got it, okay. Uh, and um, uh, I, I personally like if I look at this um, this selling here, um, you know I, I I would like to see a a bit more. Uh, uh, aggressive selling maybe up in, in some of these areas where it initiated uh, but um, uh, as we come back uh, you know are, are the sellers still going to support price here okay uh, and uh, or support the uh, the sell side here that, that's the question very similar to the same question here uh, at this area okay and um, uh, we, we can see that uh, that's where we came up to, and we see the high liquidity come back into the book here. Okay, so it's getting interesting. Maybe the sellers are getting interested up here. Okay. Anyway, I think you um, let me know if you you understand what I'm 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 speaking of here. That we're looking for a return back to where we broke from here, and we get it, and we also get it here. All right, and you'll, you're going to see it again and again. Okay, here's another one uh, I can show you right here. Oops, sorry. Let me get rid of that one. Okay, here, here we kind of, uh, there's a little bit of a consolidation and a break above. Okay, it's also here. Uh, and we go sideways and then we break, we break out of that level. All right. Okay, let's see. A few questions here. Okay, Ying, uh, welcome to the webinars. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I know there was no fundamental release or you know data release uh, at this at this point here, uh, but uh, maybe there's some sort of uh, geopolitical thing or one or another. Um, uh, speculating on that, uh, or you know maybe just uh, it was just a sweep, uh, and um, uh, you know the larger players want to drive price down to you know soak up more uh, at this price level. Uh, you know that's that's a potential. Uh, 
uh, uh, scenario here. Okay. Um, let's see. See the volume pi circles. Okay, Peter. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, it, okay, so these um, uh, pi displays, when you use the rollover tool to, uh, like, let's look at this uh, little area down here. Um, if we hover over this dot, it tells me the volume of that dot. All right, so the rollover tool, uh, you know, if I go over some of these areas here, you always get the date, the time, and you can see the time scrolls here. So, we, you know, we've got, uh, you know, microsecond uh, data here our millisecond data and then and then what was on the bid at that exact price level okay if i hover over a dot though i get all of that information plus one more line below there that's that gives me the volume okay and it's also giving me the volume at the price level vwap of that dot okay that's how it's displayed that's why it says 0 0.6 2469.6 because it is the vwap of all of that volume that occurred in that little area right there all right um, now it's not split out though if you want to split it out uh, you can just start to zoom in okay and then uh, and then take a look at it and split it out just by your zoom okay you can also use your your uh, column here uh, to split that out so we can uh, look at our volume column uh, and uh, we can uh, right click in it and we can format this and we can split our data or our display okay and uh, here, here's what occurred you know now it's this data here is for this chart range so if you're specifically looking at this dot here we'll continue to zoom in and put that price activity within your chart range and you'll see it all here okay so here you go all right so in this chart range here in this time frame uh, which is, uh, you know, let's see, 700 to uh, 300. Okay, so um, you know, we're not we're not looking at um, uh, even a, a second worth of data here yet. Okay, it's uh, we're sub second. Uh, we're looking at uh, at thousands. In fact, between each two of these dotted lines is basically a blink of a human eye. Okay, from here to here is the average blink. 200 milliseconds of a human eye. Okay, so that's how quickly these markets are trading, uh, and uh, and you've got the data for it. Okay. All right. So I I know a very specific question. Uh, and I'm covering it because a lot of you guys are trading um, uh, algorithmically or you know automated strategies. Maybe you want to see exactly where you're getting filled. You want to understand exactly what unfolded at some of those levels. But you we are as humans we are not really we're not trading at millisecond level. You know, we'll trade at maybe, uh, you know, 30 seconds here uh, or a minute or whatever. But you get the overall, um, you know, visual uh, of that uh, volume in the pie display. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Lots of questions. Good. Keep them coming. Um, how do you add the volume numbers in the CVD? Uh, okay. So Ken, let's go over that. It's very easy. Just uh, uh, first off, do you guys understand CVP is the chart range volume profile? So it's the volume profile of the chart range. Okay. If I zoom in, that chart range changes, and now this column reflects the data in the chart range. All right. So that leads to all sorts of things to to understand and 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 study. Okay. As I I was as as I was demonstrating there with that uh, that that selling. Uh, Peter was interested in. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, if you are interested in um, uh, getting the numbers here or splitting it out, well, all you have to do is just right-click in the column, and we're going to choose format. Okay. Now, before that, though, I, I just want to go over some of the others. Okay. First is, uh, and this is more for the um, uh, the first webinar, uh, to be honest. But um, uh, some of you, some of you guys are in here uh, on Friday. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it. So I can change this this column this volume column to a session range. Okay, so now it's all the volume from my session, uh, or I change it back to chart range. Okay, now uh, you, you can also reset all of that data, uh, and then below the reset though, uh, these are all the different data types. Okay, volume, 
uh, is what's selected right now. We can look at a trades counter, quotes counter, quotes delta, notes, and time and sales, or we can uh, uh, hide that column or insert a new column. Okay, but we're going to choose format. So right click, choose format, and then um, uh, you can choose bars only, bars and numbers, or numbers only. All right. And you can split it out, or you can look at that as a profile. You can arrange it center, to the right, to the left, however you like. Okay. All right. So I don't want to spend too much time on that because uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, this is, that's for the, uh, uh, the first webinar. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. Uh, second number. Second numbers in the um, oh the the red number here in the in the uh, yeah C uh, C O B column. Okay. So this actually um, this was a this red number. Um, let's see. Uh, Peter is asking about um, is um, uh, this was the original uh, iceberg detector uh, add-on, and uh, it it shows the uh, the iceberg. Uh, order uh, liquidity that traded that was not in the limit order book um, and uh, it, it would show it here in the column now the problem was with this uh, showing here in the column is that um, it, it uh, uh, if this if price comes back in, in into some of these areas uh, and refreshes the data then this this is going to it's going to go away so you only see a few numbers in here but the you know we have the um, uh, you know the enhanced iceberg detector now so let's click on studies configuration and then iceberg detector up here and uh, this uh, advanced um, or you can change the colors etc uh, you can have voice enabled uh, or you can even set the size here for that for the voice alert um, so um, the uh, uh, n is number now is uh, displayed directly onto the chart okay so we can see uh, exactly uh, you know, how many contracts traded that were not in the limit order book uh, at it, historically uh, where, where it all unfolded. Okay. All right. Uh, Frank, how do you change your column from CQC to CVP? I think I answered that. Um, so just uh, right click in your column. Okay. And then choose your different data type here. So we're going to go with quotes counter, and there you go. Okay. Let me go back to a volume column. All right. Okay. So what else is going on? Well, not much. Not much has happened here uh, at all. Um, uh, we're just channeling between uh, high areas of liquidity. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, Peter, can we uh, you use a book map for identifying exhaustion? Yeah, I've already showed several examples uh, in this webinar, uh, and um, uh, I think it brilliantly shows exhaustion, uh, lack of aggressive trading. Right? So um, let, let's just go over uh, a simple example here in a, in a trend. So this, this downtrend uh, that occurred really quickly, let's take a look at it. Okay. In a downtrend, what typically unfolds is just very aggressive uh, selling at lower lows, okay? And we can see that here. Look at the red dots at lower lows. There's a lot of selling at lower lows. It breaks down to a new area, and, it, and there's a lot of selling. And then, then it breaks down to another area, and there's a lot of selling, okay? And you'll see it again and again and again, right? Um, here, here it, it, you really didn't quite get it. Uh, but uh, here you start to, okay? Now, in a trend, uh, what typically occurs uh, is that um, uh, all of that selling and, and a flurry of, of activity and, and clusters of volume uh, occur down at the lower lows, okay? Now, when we get the um, lower highs, you know, we, we do see some buying that comes in at some of these areas here, but it is very meager, 
uh, and um, uh, it uh, usually, uh, you know, shows areas here uh, of a lack of uh, trading, and uh, the buyers just aren't interested. Okay, they're actually showing a little bit of interest here, so it's not. This is not a great example, um, but um, uh, you know, areas of exhaustion uh, look look really good to me are, are here. Uh, and this is this is a setup, you know. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, we covered in uh, uh, the part three of the uh, educational course. All right. Uh, and look at look at the uh, exhaustion here. I mean, now technically there's some trading here, so it's not really exhaustion. It's not complete exhaustion. But in context, uh, compare this to some of these other areas up here. Uh, then uh, you you have that you have that understanding. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see, Ying. Um, some of the iceberg numbers show up before or during. Oh no, they're they're not doing that. It, it's it, they're aggregated. I mean, as watch watch how I um. Okay, so look at these three the three twenty nine up here. Okay, the um, uh, iceberg detector here. Uh, someone absorbed with a, a hidden order, three hundred and twenty nine. Uh, contracts um, uh, and they traded but uh, uh, that liquidity was not in the book right so use the hand tool they're gonna hover over here and then I'll zoom in and you'll see that 329 turns into you can see how it breaks apart okay and we're showing you exactly where uh, that that phenomenon took place okay so um, uh, what you're probably seeing, um, Ying, is when you're um, uh, zooming in and out uh, or shifting the chart back and forth a bit, uh, you're gonna you're gonna see um, uh, you know the the data here. We have it all, and we split it out for you. But you can um, uh, get the the overall uh, when you zoom out. All right. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Yep. Okay. All right, you want to take a look at the NQ in the uh, uh, beginning of the market. Okay. Okay. Actually, uh, let's see. I opened up Bookmap uh, just right after the uh, the open, to be honest. So this is my entire trading session here. So it began at yeah about seven minutes after the open. All right. You can see how much more bullish, though, the um, the NQ is uh, compared to the S&P. All right, let's go back to the ES here since we've, uh, we're have we looking at some specific things. Um, <laughs> Amazon, okay. Okay, well... How many of you guys uh, trade equities uh, in the room here? And uh, are you guys uh, accessing the DX feed uh, in Bookmap? Equity traders? No. Not, no. No. Uh, there's a few. Fifth Amendment. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the same phenomena uh you're going to see it uh, unfold again and again uh it's um it's just you know how the markets you know operate uh but you you're going to see different markets behave differently s&p i mean look at these price levels here uh in the in the cob column you know we have 1300 contracts 1600 contracts i mean you know this is really thick uh this is a very thick market um and um uh, the um, uh, this is going to trade differently than oil that's a lot thinner or gold. Okay, so if I go over and take a look at gold, look at the liquidity now in the in the column here. Okay, we just have tens of contracts, not thousands of contracts, not even hundreds of contracts. You'll see hundreds every now and then, but uh, uh, and um, what you're going to get is a lot more volatility because there's less liquidity. And you get a lot more price price movement uh, due to that volatility. 
Okay. Now the S&P, when there's a, you know, volatile period, uh, you know, and, and we, we kind of saw it here uh, when they started to pull and it went dark in this area here. Well, if there's a lack of liquidity, just, just think about it. Uh, where will the next transaction take place? Where that liquidity is being provided. Okay. So if no one else is, is wanting to buy uh, except for way down here, well, the next transaction that takes place, if you hit the market sell button, is going to take place here. All right. So um, uh, that's important to know. Now, if we start to look at some of the thinner markets, you're going to look at a lot different. It's the same data here, uh, but the phenomena is it's just different. Look at uh, the spread. Uh, in Amazon, okay. Let's get rid of this. Um, this dark area here. This is here's your best off, best uh, bid here and your best offer here. Okay, so it's like um, you know we have uh, uh, you know 50 cent spread here, right? So 50 cents. Now it's it just it just widened out and then it just shrunk back down. All right. And that's what this little dark area here is in Amazon. You know, I mean, Amazon's trading at, you know, almost a thousand dollars. It's been banging around in this thousand dollar range for a bit. Uh, and uh, uh, we can zoom out, though, and we start to get that that context all together. All right. Uh, and start to look at areas uh, and levels of uh, liquidity here. High liquidity. OK. Where they're lining up to buy and sell. Okay. Yeah, pretty wicked move here um, in Amazon, right? Right in this area here, no question. Uh, you know, we see um, just a you know a lot of aggressive buying, sweeping price up, you know, exhausting out, falling right back down, and then follow through uh, to the other side. Right. So um, uh, this would. Uh, this is uh, yeah, I mean, but you can see them pulling that liquidity here, uh, and then we trade down, trade right back down. We get a bounce at at this uh, level at uh, 85, 985, and then uh, and then a follow through to the downside into another level of liquidity down here. Okay. Yeah, here's your exhaustion um, in in this area here. I mean, you see it all over the place. Look at up here, up here. Uh, up here as well, um, you know, we can just zoom in and um, uh, look at the amount, you know, that's trading up here, right? Uh, just it's very, very little if none, okay? Okay, so it, these points of exhaustion. So um, let's see, I, I forget who was asking about that, but looking for exhaustion on a pullback of a strong move. OK, uh, it's, it's a great uh, a great thing to look for. Like uh, you can see it here. OK, this is one of the strategies we cover in part three of that uh, book map education course as well. OK, we see them, uh, you know, hit the bid pretty hard. Uh, we get a pullback to where it broke from here and nothing's trading up here. Now, in, in this example here uh, in Amazon, you're not going to get filled. Uh, you know, you're if you hit the market buy button, you're going to get filled down here. Right. So uh, but, um, you know, let's just uh, go, you know, uh, over uh, if this was the S&P and, uh, you know, you, there's volume that's trading in here and, the, and it's just one tick wide, uh, you know, and you're looking for a pullback and you're seeing low volume trade at where it broke from. No one's interested. Well, there's your low volume pullback and your exhaustion. OK. Uh, into uh, maybe looking for a trend continuation. All right. Okay, let's go back to that S&P. Uh, nothing, not really seeing much at all here. Now we had the non-farm. Non-farm was good, but um, uh, we can just, uh, yeah, just uh, we're we're just trading sideways here. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, some more questions. Uh, no, I do not have any um, startup uh, uh, templates. Um, uh, this is this is um, uh, 
maybe a good time because uh, there's quite a few of you in here. Uh, I know this is more basic um, stuff from from uh, for the first webinar, but let me go over it um, uh, because we're not really seeing much, uh, to be honest here. Uh, so uh, setting up workspaces. Okay, so once you've set up your workspace by adjusting your columns, adding whatever columns you want, right-clicking in here, formatting them, um, you know, uh, you've got all your symbols lined up, you, you know, you've got everything the way that you'd like it, then come up to file and then save workspace as and give it a name. Okay, that'll be your new workspace. Uh, and then, um, uh, now this is a, a kind of a, a hidden uh, uh, user interface uh, issue here. Um, but um, uh, once you've got, let's say, your, your S&P or your one instrument uh, set up the way that you like it, well, then you can um, uh, just to the right of your configuration button here. So let's just go right to the right of it in a blank space. Okay. And then right click. Okay. You can, uh, you can, uh, there's a lot of different things here to, um, uh, uh, you know, choose from. But what we're going to choose from is inherit chart settings from. Okay. So you can uh, inherit the settings from another chart. So, for example, let's go back to, let's go look at maybe Tesla. Okay, and, or no, let's go to the NQ, all right, uh, and let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, okay, so you can see here I have the uh, quotes delta column. Let's say I want to look at, insert another column, uh, and I want to right click, and I want to choose that as quotes counter. Uh, you know, maybe I want to look at uh, configuration like this, okay, and uh, I also want to have my uh, cumulative volume delta up. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe my, uh, uh, my trade control panel open, et cetera. Okay. Um, uh, and then let's do one more and we'll just put on candlesticks. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's say, uh, this is, this is how I have my NASDAQ set up. Um, and, um, uh, and I look at my S and P here, uh, and I want my S and P to look like my NASDAQ. So what you do is just right click to the right here of the configurations button and then inherit chart settings from. You can search from a previous contract here uh, that, you, that you had set up or you can just right click and then in, uh, in, inherit chart settings from uh, an instrument that's already open here. So let's inherit it from the NQ. Okay, and there we go. So now I've got the settings here. Uh, for the, um, uh, the my uh, my Nasdaq and it's now uh, being displayed in my S and P. All right. Okay. That's uh, that's that. Uh, let's uh, let's go back here. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to inherit chart settings from. Oh, let's see. I think it's from the six E. It's the same same way it's set up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. There we go. Uh, another thing to look for, um, and this is uh, this is a real nice feature, um, it, using the uh, indicator panel um, and um, uh, our CVD here. Okay, on those areas of exhaustion, uh, look at your um, uh, your CVD. Okay, on those pullbacks. Uh, and uh, see if you get any. I mean, you're gonna get insight. You're gonna. See, you're just. You know, you're gonna see that um, uh, there's uh, there's some uh, less trading in some of those areas. Uh, at least you know you should. Um, and um, uh, let's try to find a good example here. Uh, maybe in here. Let's zoom in. Okay, so yeah, it's not um, looking for a cleaner, cleaner example where um, you know you'll come back down and test price from you know the same area here, uh, and and you'll see that the CVD though is higher. Well, that's showing you exhaustion, right? It's it well, it's it's showing you that there's less selling, right, on that on the on that pullback. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm not really finding a good example here to show you with the CVD, but on the uh, on the on the pullback into where this broke from uh, originally, then um, uh, you're going to get a um, uh, you know 
a, a higher CVD uh, because there's just going to be less sellers involved here and more buying, right? So that, that gives you insight. Okay, sellers are not interested. I better get in or try to get in as quick as I can uh, to look for that extension to the upside, all right? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Another flip of the book. Um, 11.15. Yeah, I don't really see it. Um, but uh, anyway, let's see. Frank, you have another question. So it's getting used to it. I don't have indicators on my chart anymore. All you do is watch book map. Um, yeah, me too. Um, yeah, excellent, Frank. That's really nice to hear. Um, that uh, uh, you know, book book map is just it's it's telling you. I mean, it, it's you know, if you see something that you're looking for, you know it, uh, and uh, uh, you know something very specific. And if it doesn't happen, and this has happened all week uh, in this advanced webinar, you know, in the you know earlier in the, in the day, you know, or in the in the uh, session, usually this week we've we've seen it that uh, it's like, no, I'm looking for this very specifically. I'm looking for that. Uh, this is telling me something here. Uh, but then we get into some of these sideways actions here, and like um, you know, we're not getting really a lot of clarity. We're not getting any sort of commitment here. Uh, to give us uh, insight and just stay away. I mean, don't over trade it. I mean, you know, you, you're just, you're, you're just, it's a shot in the dark. Uh, and um, it's a really good point that, uh, that Frank is making up uh, here, uh, bringing up and um, uh, yeah. So, you know, you know what you're looking for. That is your trading plan and your trading method. Uh, and uh, you know, book map is, um, is very visual. So, uh, you know, it gives you those visual uh, clues. All right. Now, things like uh, this, this really harsh move here, this is, it's, it's hard to see it. I mean, you know, you don't know that's going to come. I mean, there was, there's was really no insight here to this. Okay. Just being honest. I mean, um, we, we, all of a sudden someone jumped in and, and just slammed on price. Okay. Or a variety of players jumped in. Okay, so I mean, we do see though. I mean, do we we do see once we got down to here, we see them pull more liquidity. Well, that's giving me insight for sure. All right, and we also went over this here. This is subtlety, but uh, we see the the stain in the in the book in these areas here. They're they're starting to show some interest. Someone is. Okay, and uh, they're starting to show more interest, but a little bit lower. That's now we're having now we have a lot more information here. Okay, they're starting to come back in at this level now too. Okay, start to combine that with some exhaustion and some aggressive buying, and there there you go. All right, all right, we got to end this, wrap this up here. So let's um, go through the few more questions, and then uh, we'll call it a week. Uh, this is really good to hear, Frank. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Frank says that uh, uh, I should add uh, your, your education using Bookmap helped me tremendously in being able to singularity um, singularly use Bookmap to trade alone. That's uh, it's great to hear. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, once uh, once you start to see some of these things, like you'll be looking for it. I think very specifically, uh, and um, uh, you know, combine that with maybe your higher time frames or the, the maybe the previous way that you traded, uh, you know, looking at uh, whatever indicators, whatever patterns or, you know, candlesticks, whatever it is that you, you, you looked at before, uh, you know, I, I, I still, you know, every day I'll be looking at my higher time frames. Okay. I, I want to know uh, where some of these reversals and swings took place. And then I start to anticipate, uh, the book start to be uh, it starts to build out in some of those areas, okay. And then I want to know that context of the auction uh, in some of those areas. Do they, you know? Do they really mean business, or is it exhausting out in some of those areas? And there's just a lack of trading. And that's what I want to know. 
I want to know where they're the, what the tape is telling me too. Okay, where are they? Where are they transacting? Where are they trading? Uh, and um, uh, it gives a lot of insight to where price can accept or extend. Oh, you're welcome, Peter. Ah, thank you, Adam. Yeah. Yeah, have a great weekend. Uh, let's see, uh, Trader C, um, the um, links to the uh, video recordings. Yeah. Okay, they're here. Uh, YouTube page. Okay, let's go to the home. All right, and um, uh, scroll down a bit. And uh, book map platform details webinars are here. Now, for the last couple of days, it, um, uh, I've also put up the recording for the advanced. Okay, so uh, you guys can uh, can get those as well. All right. Uh, great. Now, yeah, thank you, thank you for the for the uh, compliments, guys. Darcy, uh, Adam, Peter, Frank, Francisco. Yeah. Francisco says he, he need he needs nothing else. Uh, just just book map. Um, yeah, great to hear. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, your feedback is very important. Uh, let me know uh, things you guys want to go over or not clear about, uh, and uh, how I might be able to help. So um, uh, we'll um, you know uh, get more insight uh, to uh, some of those trading levels. Okay. Have a good weekend, guys, and we'll catch up next week.